Hello students, Ms. Davitt here. And what I have for you for my MA 101 Intermediate Algebra class is a final exam study guide video that will go through the entire study guide with you and show you how to solve the problems. If you would like to have a copy of this resource that I'm using, you can head over to module 16 and you will find a PDF where you can download and print this. So let's go ahead and get started. It looks like for number one and two, we are using our exponent rules. It does say that assume that all variables represent non-zero real numbers. So what that means is our letters, our variables, if I was to put a number in there, they're going to be non-zero real numbers. That's the only way that we can solve them. All right, let's get started with number one. Number one, I'm going to write it bigger because you might not be able to see that. Very good. Step one, I would use the power rule because we want to get rid of our parentheses first. Power rule says that we multiply what's on the inside times what is on the outside. So I'm going to take all of these numbers, the two, the y squared, x squared, and y to the third power. So I end up with x, eight, x to the sixth, y to the third. On my next one, same thing. This x is to the first power. So I have x squared, y to the sixth. And these two numbers are now missing the powers. And what we have now are two by monomials that are being multiplied together. So we're gonna use our product rule on the top to simplify that. But first let's do on the bottom and we will end up with X cubed, Y cubed. What I did here was power rule. Next, we're going to use product rule on the top. My bottom will remain the same right now. And if I multiply on the top, you remember the product rule tells us to add the exponents. Eight times one is eight. I also have an X. Six plus two is eight. And I also have a Y. And three plus six is nine. Next, I will use the quotient rule. The quotient rule says that we are going to subtract our exponents as long as the base is the same. Eight over one gives me eight. And my X term, eight minus three is five. And then my Y term, nine minus three is six. Final answer. Okay, let's get ready for number two. Okay, I've rewritten the problem bigger so that we can see it. The first thing that I'm going to do is the power rule because I want to get that negative four on the outside out of there first. You could do the inside first and then take all of that to the negative fourth power. Me personally, I just like to drop my power rules first. Power rule says to multiply. So if we multiply, we will end up with the following. Okay, so what I have now is t to the negative 4, z to the 12th, over t to the 16, z to the negative 4th. 
What I'm going to do next is going to be quotient rule. Quotient rule. Remember, quotient rule says that we are going to subtract. So if remember, we always want to take our smallest number and move it to the largest number. My smallest number is negative four. So I'm going to move this down to the bottom and I'm going to do 16 minus negative four, which is going to give me a 20. So I already know on the bottom, I have T to the 20. And then I look at my Z's. If I look at my Z's, I can pull a negative four to the top and then 12 minus negative four is equal to 16. So therefore on the top, I have a Z to the 16th power. Final answer. Okay, number three, ask us to perform division of polynomials. And they're telling you that you can use either long or synthetic division. You can use synthetic division on this problem because we do not have a number in front of the X. And so I would say use synthetic division. It's faster, it's easier um, because um, no number in front of R minus five. I don't see any number right here. So if there's no number, then I can use synthetic division. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the problem. Remember on the outside, we put the opposite. So the opposite of minus five is plus five. And then I put my coefficients of all of the other numbers that will be on top. I've got an eight, negative 36, Okay, I have all of my coefficients listed. Now let's perform the synthetic division. Bring down my eight. Five times eight is 40. Negative 36 plus 40 is four. Four times five is 20. Negative 11 plus 20 is nine. Nine times five is 45. And negative 45 plus 45 gives me a zero. So therefore my remainder is zero. I don't, I don't have a remainder in this problem. Then I come back. This is going to be my constant. This one's going to be my X to the first power. And this one's going to be X to the second power. So my final answer would be eight X squared plus 4x plus 9. For the next step, they're going to give you th two functions, f of x and g of x, and they're going to request that you either add, subtract, multiply, or divide. We'll start with number four, and number four you will see is asking me to add. Right here it says f plus g. F plus g of x means to add the two functions. So I'll take my first function, which is f of x. That is x squared plus 4x minus 2. And I'm going to add that to the g function, which is negative 8x squared plus 10x minus 9. Then I start combining like terms, adding them together, put what goes together. Don't forget that I can also put constants together and I will be left with negative seven X squared plus 14 X minus 11. In number five, you'll see that they are asking us to subtract. They want us to subtract the two functions. So I start with my F function, which is X squared 
plus 5x minus 2, and I'm going to subtract negative 8x squared plus 8x minus 6. The rule says I have to change my minus to a plus and then change the signs of everything after that. My first one will stay the same. And then I combine like terms. x squared plus 8x squared gives me 9x squared. 5x minus 8x gives me negative 3x. And then negative 2 plus 6 gives me positive 4. In number 6, they are asking us to multiply the two functions together. They want f times g. So therefore, I have 5x plus 2 times negative 5x minus 7. I'm going to use FOIL for this. For f, I have negative 25x squared. For my O, my outside, I have minus 35x. For my inside, I have negative 10x. And then for my last, I have negative 14. And you will see that your O and your I go together. So your final answer would be negative 25x squared minus 45x minus 14. For the next couple of problems, it's asking you to factor them completely down until they won't go down anymore. And it says if the polynomial cannot be factored, then your answer will be prime. Number seven is going to be a factor by GCF. If I look across there, I can see that there is something that I can take out of all of those. You have to think about what number will go into six, also go into nine, and also go into 12. And hopefully you realize that that number is three. So the first thing I can do is factor out a three. I also notice that I have a Y in all three of those. So I can factor out a Y and we always use the smallest power. Use the smallest power, which would be squared. And then I put my set of parentheses and then I have to figure out what is left. I'll come over here to the side and show you what I mean by that. What is left? We have 6y to the 5th minus 9y to the 4th plus 12y squared. And we are dividing every one of these by 3y squared, which was our GCF. So what I have left is going to be 2y to the third minus 3y squared plus 4. Final answer. Number 8 is factor by grouping. So I'm going to split this. For each section, I'm going to factor out the GCF. And then remember, I have to keep what is inside exactly the same. So you will get on the left side 2x onto 5x minus 6. And on the right side, you have minus 3 onto 5x minus 6. And just like we talked about, what is inside the parentheses matches. So when I write my final answer, I put the outside together. And what was the same is the other one.
Number nine is factoring a trinomial. I have to figure out what two numbers will multiply to give me eight, negative eight, and also add to give me negative two. And those two numbers are four and two, and I'm gonna need my four to be negative and my two to be positive. Number 10 is a C method. A times C is 20. So I have to figure out what numbers will give me 20. One and 20 will, two and 10 will, also four and five will. And so which one of these in combination will give me the one in the middle? And it's going to be the four and the five. So I split this. You'll see that negative four plus five will give me the one that I need. And then I use factor by grouping and I will be able to finish solving this problem. I'm gonna pull out a four X on the first two terms. That leaves me with X minus one. And then I'm going to pull out a positive five on the right side. And that leaves me with X minus one. So there's your final answer, the 4x plus 5 times the x minus 1. Number 11 is factoring by difference of squares. What is the square root of 49x squared? That's going to be 7x. So I put 7x on both of them. And then what is the square root of 25? That is 5. And then the rule says make one of them positive, make one of them negative. Number 12 is factoring a trinomial. The only difference is in how you write your answer. And so if I looked for the two numbers that would multiply to give me 256, and those same numbers would also add to give me 32. That is going to be 16 and 16, and both of them need to be positive. So you'll notice, since I have the exact same thing twice, I'm going to write this answer as x plus 16 to the second power. Number 13 is difference of cubes. We have a cubic here. And if you remember, there are some formulas that help you with this one. If I'm doing subtraction, I'm going to do A minus B, and that's going to be times A squared plus AB plus B squared. So let's figure out what our A and B is. What is my A? My A is the, the um, cubic of 64, P cubed, which would be 4P. What is my cube root of 1? That's going to be 1. So this is thinking about the cubed root of 64P cubed. Over here, we have the cubed root of one. So now that I have my A and B, I can plug those numbers back into the formula and I will end up with A, which is 4P, minus B, which is one. A squared is 16P squared. A times B is 4P and that's plus. And then one squared is one. Number 14 and 15 want us to solve the equation. You'll notice that they have an equal sign. Let's And so no, luckily number 14 is already factored for us. We have X minus two, X plus five. Both of those are set equal to zero. 
So that's all I do is take each of these and set them equal to zero. So my final answer is that X is equal to two and X is equal to negative five. And you would put that in a solution set of two, negative five. Number 15 is not factored yet, but we can factor it so that we could solve the equation. This is going to factor into the following. And then you will see that I have X equals four and X equals negative 11. So solution set would be four, negative 11 in any order. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. Number 16 and number 17 want us to take rational expressions and either multiply or divide them. And the rule says to factor them out as much as you can, factor all the way down on top and bottom, all the way across, and then Cross off your commons, commons will cancel out, and then we will be left with things that didn't cross out. Number 16 is multiplication. So if I, I'm gonna factor it out. On the left side, I have K six and two both of them positive in the denominator. I have six and three. On the right side in the numerator, I have a GCF. So I'm gonna pull out a K and I'm left with K plus three. On the bottom, if I factor this, I'm left with K minus seven and k plus two. And here is when you can cross off your commons. k plus six crosses off. k plus two crosses off. So does k plus three. And you're left with the final answer of k over k minus seven. In number 17, it's a division problem. So we have to remember to flip the second one and also change your division to a multiplication. So we're going to flip this one. We'll get it set up and factor it. You'll see the denominator on the left side only has a binomial. On the top, I can factor this into seven and three both of them positive. When I flip this, my bottom is difference of squares. This is going to be X's with my sevens, make one of them plus, one of them minus. And then on the top, I can factor out a three and I'm left with X minus seven. Keep in mind that I flipped the second one, the one that's after the division, we have to flip this one, flip it upside down. Now it's time to cross off our commons. X plus three is a common. X plus seven is a common. X minus seven is a common. And you'll notice that you're only left with the number three. Number 18 is asking us to add rational numbers. And so the first thing we're going to have to do is find our LCD. But it looks like our denominators are not factored. So we're going to have to start by factoring each one of these so we can figure out what our LCD is. We got a four and a five on the top, and then we can factor the top and the bottom. On the left side, you have, let me see, we got a two and a one. Both of them are going to be negative. And then on the right side, it looks like we got difference of squares. And I'm sorry, this is a Y, not an X. 
I see that now. So we got y plus one and y minus one. So then we can find our LCD now. So our LCD is all the factors that we see running across the bottom. I see a y minus two. I see a y minus one. And I see a y plus one. So this is now my LCD. Okay, next step is to look at the left side or right side and figure out which one we got missing. So if I look at my left side, I have a Y minus two and a Y minus one. So therefore what is missing is Y plus one. So I take my top and multiply that times Y plus one and I will be left with four Y plus four. And then I look at the other side and see what I have missing. What I have missing on the right side is y minus two. So if I do distributive property there, I will have positive five y minus 10. Now I can simplify some things across the top. I can put my y's together and get nine y and then four minus 10 is negative six. And this is all over my LCD of these three things, y minus two, y minus one, y plus one. Number 19 wants us to take rational expressions and subtract them. Again, I have to find my LCD, but my bottoms are not simplified yet. I need to factor them first. So let's get that started. Let's factor the top and bottom. It looks like on the left side, I have difference of squares. So that's going to be a plus four minus four. And then I'm subtracting a six. And it looks like on this side, I have x, x, four, and one. And both of them are positive. So I now have found my LCD. My LCD says list everything you see across the bottom. I see X plus four. I see an X minus four. And I also see an X plus one. So I'm going to get that set up on my new equation. Okay, next step is to see what is missing. It looks like in the first one, I am missing on the left side, I'm missing X plus one. So if I multiply that together on that side, I have X squared plus X. I still have a minus in the middle. You notice that I'm keeping this in brackets because I already know that I'm gonna have to change my signs on the right side. On the right side, it looks like the one that I am missing is X minus four. And so on this side, I have a six X minus 24. When we subtract polynomials, don't forget you're going to have to change the signs. So my new top is going to be X squared plus X minus six plus 24. And then I have to see, okay, will it, six X, sorry, six X, will any of this go together? It's still over the same LCD. And you'll notice that I can put together on the inside and I get minus five X plus 24. And that is all over my LCD. Number 20 and number 21 want you to simplify radicals. I would, um, 
put the number. Now you cannot put the letters. You cannot put X squared, K to the seven, K to the Q to the um, eight in the calculator, but you can at least put the numbers in there. And so if I was simplifying the 486, that is going to simplify to 81, because remember I got to find a perfect square. So 81 times six, and then I keep my positive, always keep the positive, and then figure out what you can pull out. In this one, I can pull out a nine, which is the square root of 81. It looks like the six stays on the inside and the square root of X squared is X. So that comes on the outside. Nine X onto the square root of six. Number 21, don't forget, look right here. There's a negative. So you automatically know there's going to be a negative at the end of this answer. Okay, let's split this one up because we got a K that's an odd number and a Q that's an even number. I can split 20 into four times five. And then I would go down one on my K so that I get an even number and then list the extra K to make up for the seven. And then I still have Q to the eight. So let's see what can come out and what has to stay on the inside. Square root of four is two. Square root of five, can't do anything with it. Put it on the inside. Square root of K six is K three. So that goes out. The square root of K to the first power has to stay in. And then the square root of K to the Q, Q to the eight is Q to the fourth. Final answer. Okay, number 22 and 23 are asking us to add and subtract radicals. We have to have what is underneath the radical being the same. And you'll notice in number 22 that under the radical is the same. We got radical two. Now, now keep in mind, there's an invisible one right here. There's a one right there. So if I was to put these together, remember what is on the inside, you keep the same and then add or subtract the outside. And I got one minus eight gives me negative seven. So negative seven onto the square root of two. I wanted to make note on this problem that it should be D, but it did not put the negative out there. There is an error on the study guide. So this should have been D. Sorry about that. It just didn't print the negative sign. Let's go to number 23. The first thing that I notice is that on the inside, they're not the same. So right now I can't add them together because what's on the inside is not the same, but I can simplify. I can simplify each of these and try to get the inside the same. 2X won't do anything. Let's bring that down. 72 will go into 36 times two times X, and then eight will go to four times two times X. And then I have to pull out whatever the square root is and multiply that by that outside seven. So I have two X plus 36, two X, plus 14, 2x. And you'll see that now every single thing underneath the radical is the same. So I add my outsides. Don't forget there's a one out here. So if I add my outsides, I will get 57. And what's left on the inside is 2x. Number 24 and number 25 want us to multiply. Multiply radicals. 
So let's start with number 24. On uh, This one, it doesn't matter if they match on the inside. It's not like adding and subtracting. It's okay if they don't match. We just multiply straight across. So it looks like I have 2 times 10 gives me 20. And if I multiply my x to the 4th, times x to the sixth, I got x to the tenth power. Don't forget product rule where you add them together. That's going to simplify. I can simplify that to four times five times x to the tenth. And then I can pull out the square root of four is two. Five can't pull out. It stays on the inside. And then the square root of x to the tenth is x to the fifth. Remember, we take half. We take half. Number 25, I got two onto nine x fifth times three onto three x to the sixth. So I'm going to first simplify this by multiplying it together. First thing I'm gonna do is multiply them together. On the outside, two times three will give me a six. On the inside, it looks like I have nine times three is 27. And then I have X to the 11th power because five plus six is 11. Okay, let's, simpli let's see if we can simplify. Yes, I can. 27 will be nine times three. And then we can't have an odd power. So I'm going to go down one to X to the 10th and then keep the extra X on the outside. And so I could pull out a square root of nine, which is three. That gives me 18 on the outside. Uh, the three, I can't do anything with it. So I'm going to leave that guy underneath the square root. X to the 10th will go down to X to the fifth. And then the extra X on the end has to stay under the radical because it's to the first power. Number 26 wants us to rationalize the denominator. All that means is get the radical sign out of the bottom. We have to assume that all variables will be positive real numbers. In this particular problem, we don't have any variables. So don't worry about that part of the instruction because there's no letters on this. But we are not allowed to have a radical 10 in the bottom. What's going to happen is I'm going to split this to put a radical on both. And then what we do is we multiply by one. But instead of using one, I'm going to use radical 10 over radical 10. And so then I am left with, on top, it looks like 1210 over square root of 100. Now, 1210 will break down into 121 times 10. And then the square root of 100 is 10. If I pull the square root of 121 out, I will get 11 on the outside. On the inside is the 10. And then on the bottom, the square root of 100 gave us 10. So that's what we have left on the bottom. Number 27 is solving a radical equation. Don't forget to check for extraneous solutions. In number 27, we're not going to have any extraneous solutions because we're only going to do one. And think, remember that if I have something under a square root and I take that and square it, it's going to cancel the square root out and I'm only left with what's on the inside. So the way that you solve this type of problem is to square both sides. So I'm going to square the square root of 2x plus 1. And I'm also going to square the 7. So then if, if I do that on the left side, it causes 
the square root symbol to drop. And then seven squared is 49. And then I just have a two-step equation. I'm gonna do minus one on both sides. So 2K is equal to 48, divide by two, and I will be left with K is equal to 24. Okay, number 28 and number 29 are solving absolute value equations. And we learned that you gotta get the absolute value bars by itself. And then you set the left side equal to the positive and equal to the negative. So let's start with number 28. On the inside, I have B minus six is equal to three. And the rule says, take what isolated is by itself. So I take what is inside B minus six and set it equal to the positive. And then also take what is inside and set it equal to the negative. And if I solve these things out, I will get the following. B is equal to nine and B is equal to three. And they will probably, they do, they put it in a solution set where you could do nine comma three. Number 29, we have underneath the radical bars, Y plus seven minus three is equal to eight. You'll notice that the bars are not isolated. I have a negative three that I need to move to the other side. So I'm gonna do plus three. And then I have Y plus seven under my bars is equal to 11. Use the same formula. Take what is inside the bars, set it equal to the positive. Also set what is equal to the negative. And then I do my one-step equation. And I will have that y is equal to 4 and negative 18. Number 30 through 34 is going to go over our compound inequalities. There is a, another typo on number 30. There should be some zeros right here. So on C and D, there is a zero. So number 30, it looks like a compound inequality, which gives us an and. I've got to get X by itself. So I'm going to subtract one all the way across. And I'm left with negative nine is less than X is less than or equal to zero. If I wrote this in, if I wrote it in interval notation or graphed it, let's look at the graph first. If I had a negative nine up here is zero, they're telling me that I have an open circle at negative nine. I have a closed circle at zero and X is all of the numbers that are in between these. So for my interval notation, this starts at negative nine. It ends at zero. It does not include the negative nine. So therefore there is a parenthesis and it does include the zero. So therefore there is a bracket. Okay, number 31, we have another and problem. I'm gonna rewrite this so we can do it together a little bit bigger and 6x minus 4 is less than 8. Okay, first thing I'm going to have to do is get x by itself. So I'm going to have to do some math to make that happen. After doing the math, I ended up with X is greater than or equal to negative one sixth. And also X is less than two. And this is an and problem. So don't forget that we are looking for both graphs. 
if you see, and both graphs have to be there. So I'm going to set this up. I got a negative one six down here. I got a closed circle and it says greater than. Up here, I have a two and I have a open circle and it says less than. And so the only places where I see both graphs are between negative one sixth and two. Negative one sixth and two. It looks like I have a closed circle at negative one sixth. So that means a bracket. And I have an open circle at two, which means a parentheses. I want to start on number 32 because you will see there are some numbers missing. There needs to be a two right here and a five right here. And then on C, this will be two comma five. All right, let's go over 32. 32 is an or problem. I have X plus four is less than six or negative four X is less than negative 20. We got a couple things going on. Remember our OR problems, you only have to see one graph. As long as it's doing something on that side, you only have to see one of them. I also see a flip, flip of an inequality sign because I see that we are going to be dividing by a negative four. So watch that. Let's first do the math and figure out what our new equations are. Okay, so we have x is less than 2 or x is greater than 5. So if I drew that on the number line at 2, it says open circle and we're less than, that goes to the left. And then if I was over here at five, that also has an open circle and it says greater than. Remember, or we only have to see one of the graphs. And so therefore the answer I'm seeing is from negative infinity to two with parentheses on both sides since we got open circle. And I'm going to union that with five to positive infinity. Okay, number 33, I see we have an or problem. So keep in mind, you're only looking for one graph. They don't have to be both on top of each other. I do see a flip because I noticed that on the left side, we are dividing by a negative six. So let's go ahead and solve these equations out first. We ended up with X is less than five or X is greater than negative one. So let's put both of these graphs onto a number line at negative one. I have an open circle and it says greater than. So this goes to the right at five. I also have an open circle and it says less than, this is going to the left. Now the or says you only have to see one graph. Yes, you can see both between negative one and five, but this is not an and problem. This is an or problem. And so where are you seeing the graph? You're seeing it on the entire number line, entire number line. And so what do we put if we use the entire number line? Negative infinity to infinity. Okay, that ends our final exam study guide resource video. I hope that this helped you and I hope that your grade on your final exam is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to all of you guys passing my class.